Hey kids, Miss Lisa again. All right, this week, instead of having a Bible story, we're going to do two things, two very important things. The first is we're going to review our three stories about Paul. All right, so I'm going to ask you some review questions. I have my handy dandy review questions here and you're going to answer them and we're going to keep practicing the answers to these questions so you remember the stories really well. Okay, we're going to do that first. And then the second thing we're going to do is our first memory verse. Ooh. Okay, so we are going to learn a really long passage, uh, Luke 2, 8 to 14. And the first verse we're going to do today, but we'll do that in a minute. Let's do our review first. All right, so we've learned three stories about Paul. All right, so the first story was the one Miss Lisa taught you. So think back. Think back to when we did the first story, and I'm going to ask you, Paul had a name before he was Paul. What was his name? Mm -hmm. Easy. It was Saul. Saul rhymes with Paul, and I told you to remember Saul comes first because salt and pepper. Saul comes first and then Paul. Now, when, when Paul was Saul, he was a really, really mean guy, and what did he used to do all the time? He used to persecute Christians, which means he used to beat them up and put them in jail. That was basically his job. All right, so Paul, when he was Saul, was going to go persecute some Christians, and he was going to go do that in a specific town. What was the name of the town? Mm. That's a hard one, but remember, I told you to remember it because we wear masks so that's part of it it's damascus damascus was the name of the town remember it was on a sign on the road that he was on all right so when we, he was on the road to damascus what happened to him yes he was walking along when a suddenly a bright light came out and it knocked him down onto the ground and the light started speaking to him and saying things like, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? All right, so who, who was talking out of this light? It was Jesus. It was Jesus talking to Paul and asking him why he was such a bad person and why he hated Christians so much. All right, so Paul, Saul <laughs> decided that, oh my gosh, he couldn't believe that this light was talking to him. He and what happened to Paul's body after the light? Yes, he went blind. He went blind. He couldn't see a thing. But he still had to get to the city he was going to. So how did he get to the city? His friends had to lead him by the hand to the city because he, he couldn't see anything. The light was so bright. And remember, his friends didn't see or hear anything. So they really thought Paul was losing his mind. All right. So he gets to the city and God sent someone to heal Paul of his blindness. Who was that person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We learned about him last year. Ananias. We remember his name by calling him Bananias, right? Okay, so Ananias came and, and healed him of his blindness. How long did Paul stay in that city to learn and study about Jesus? It was a long time. Long, 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 long. Three years. All right. Paul stayed there three years to learn about Jesus before he became the missionary that we know him of today. All right. So the next story Miss Sue told you was about Paul and one of his friends. What was his friend's name? Paul and Silas. Silas was his friend. All right. So Paul and Silas went to around being missionaries together quite a bit. They were like they were like Batman and Robin, you know? They were like the greatest missionary team ever, like Marvel Comics. All right, so Paul and Silas were in the town of Philippi, and there was this kind of weird girl walking around the square. And what was wrong with her? There was something wrong with her. She had an evil spirit in her. So she would say these crazy things and she would act kind of crazy because there was an evil spirit in her. Um, but Paul and Silas 
helped her somehow. What did they do? They told the evil spirit, you get out of that girl. That's right. So the evil spirit left the girl because Paul was very much um, working, uh, working with God, who was actually the one who takes the spirit out. But the evil spirit left and the girl was totally normal after that. It was, it was really a miracle, an incredible miracle. But there were some people who weren't happy about this miracle. Mm -hmm. There were men who used to use the girl to make money. And so they were real unhappy about her not having the evil spirit in her anymore. So what did they do? They went to the Roman authorities and they said, you have to arrest these guys for taking this evil spirit out of this girl. They had Paul and Silas arrested for doing an incredible miracle. That doesn't seem right, does it? Really strange, really strange. All right, so um, after the Roman authorities took Paul and Silas, what did they do to them? They did a couple things. So the first one was they stripped off all their clothes right in the middle of the square. How embarrassing. And then they beat them. They beat them really badly. And then they threw them in jail. All right. So there were like three things that happened to Paul and Silas. They had their clothes taken off. They were beaten. And then they were thrown in jail. All right. So when they were in jail, they, not only were they locked behind um, uh, uh, prison guards, prison walls, but they also were held down somehow. Remember Miss Sue was telling you how they kept Paul and Silas from moving around? What'd they do? They put these big, heavy, wooden, long blocks on their feet so that they couldn't move. So they were stuck just sitting with their feet out and they couldn't walk around. That's really awful. First beaten, then in jail, then they got wooden blocks on them. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that was a pretty awful thing to happen, but how did Paul and Silas react? What did they do? Did they complain? Did they be like, oh, forget this God thing. This is too hard. No, they did two things. They sang songs about God and they said prayers out loud. So they were praying and singing while they were in jail after being beaten and having their feet all tied down with wood. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, but pretty impressive. All right. So as they were praying and singing, something really amazing happened. What happened? An earthquake came. An earthquake came and shook the earth so badly that the prison gates just fell open. They, there were, they weren't locked anymore. There were no gates and, and the wooden blocks came off. And so Paul and Silas could have just got up and walked away. But did they? No, no, they didn't. They stayed right there. And the guard, when he saw that the gates were open and he was so afraid that all of the um, prisoners in there had run away, that he was about to kill himself. But what did Paul and Silas say? They said, don't kill yourself. We're right here. We're right here. We're right here. We didn't go anywhere. And the guard couldn't believe it, right? He was so amazed that Paul and Silas stayed there. And so what did he do? He did a couple things, right? He, he asked Paul and Silas, how can I be saved? Because clearly Paul and Silas had something special about them. So the guard wanted to know how could he be saved? The second thing he did was he took them to his home and he fed them dinner. He said, come to my house, even though you're prisoners, come to my house and have dinner. And the third thing he did was he and all of his family got baptized so that they would follow Jesus. That's pretty crazy, right? He totally changed his whole life because of Paul and Silas's witness to them, the, the way they were such good missionaries. Okay, now we're going to go to our third story that Mr. Todd told you. And here are the questions for that one. Paul, um, Paul was on a boat. He was a prisoner. Again, he was always getting picked up by the authorities and being sent to jail. So he was on a prisoner boat with some other prisoners on the way to Nidus. 
Remember, Mr. Todd told us about this weird word. It starts with a C, but you don't say the C. You just say the N. Needus was the place that the, um, the prisoner boat was going. And something happened to this ship. What happened? Yeah, it was a huge storm. It was lots of wind and rain and water coming up over the boat. And everybody was so frightened because it was battered by this huge storm. But what did Paul say? to the crew and everybody there. He was like, chill out, man. Don't worry. Nobody's gonna die in this storm, but we are gonna be shipwrecked. So everybody was looking at him like, are you crazy? And look at the storm, the wind and the water was coming over. Paul said, don't worry, I promise you, nobody's gonna die. All right, so um, they still wanted to try to survive the storm, so they did something to try and make the boat lighter. Because if you have a lighter boat, that's better in the storm. What did they do? They started throwing things overboard. They were tossing all of the cargo over. They threw the food over. They were just throwing things overboard so that they didn't have a lot of stuff on the ship and it would be lighter, okay? Um, and when they saw land, they saw land finally and the wind was coming and everything. But then what happened? right as they were getting close to land the boat hit a sandbar right and what happened to the boat it, it busted up into all sorts of pieces yeah it was like all broken up and it was as it was starting to break up and they knew that they were gonna be uh, uh be in trouble the guards on the boat wanted to do something to the prisoners and they said to the captain we should do this what was it They wanted to kill all the prisoners because they didn't want them to get away. But the captain said, no, no, we're not going to kill the prisoners. And this is what the captain told everybody to do. What did he say to do? He said, everybody, there's land in the distance. If you can swim, you swim, swim like crazy, swim, swim, swim. And if you can make it to land, then we'll all be saved. Mm -hmm. So that's what people did. Now, here's the question. How many people died in this shipwreck? Zero. Remember Paul said earlier, don't worry, nobody's going to die. Zero people died in the shipwreck. So Paul's uh, premonition came true. God had told him, an angel of the Lord had come to them and said, there will be nobody who will die in this. And he told everybody that and no one died. Okay. Those were your review questions for your three Paul stories. We're going to keep trying them over and over again so you can answer them, okay? Each week we'll do a couple different review questions so you remember, all right? And if you can't get any of them right, you can always just rewind this and do it again because now you know all the answers. Well, it's not, it's not cheating. It's like practicing, okay? So practice your review questions and we'll do a few every week, okay? Okay, now we're gonna learn our memory verse. Okay, so this is the first part of a very long part of the Bible that we're gonna learn all year. And this is the first verse. This is Luke 2, verse eight. And here it is. I know, I know. It looks long. It looks long, but don't worry. It's not that bad. I'll help you remember it, ready? So let's read it together, ready? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. You got that? Let's read it again one more time, and then we're going to just talk real quick about it. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Okay, so what is this? What does this verse mean? All right, so this is the beginning of the Christmas story. Remember, we told you that we were going to learn a long passage about the Christmas story. And this is the part where the shepherds come in. Okay, wait a minute. What's a shepherd? Oh, we talked about a shepherd, right? Last year, we learned the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want, right? So what is a shepherd? 
A shepherd is a person who takes care of sheep. So that's his job. A shepherd is someone out watching the sheep as they're out in the plains and they're eating their food and he makes sure they don't wander off because remember we learned all those sheep facts and how sheep are not really the smartest animal. Mm, not very much, right? And he makes sure that nobody comes and eats the sheep, you know, because there are wolves and all sorts of uh, predators that would eat a sheep. So that that's what our story is about to start. It's about a bunch of shepherds, all right? So there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. What's a flock? Well, hello! It's Stella! Me! Stella! Remember me? I'm here to tell you what a flock is. A flock is a big group of sheep, just like me. A flock is what a shepherd watches, a group of sheep all together. That's a flock. Oh, a whole group of sheep is called a flock. That's what that is. So now it makes sense, right? Because we're talking about shepherds. So let's say it again. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now, I wanted to try and find a way to help you remember this verse. So how can I help you remember? Who do I have here in my house that can help you remember this verse? And there were shepherds living nearby in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Wait a minute. What just happened? Hold on. Let's see that again. And there were shepherds living nearby in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what we just saw. The shepherds weren't really shepherds, right? Who were they? And, and the flock wasn't a real flock, right? Just like cardboard pictures of a flock. And it didn't really occur at night, even though there was like a moon and the stars in the background, but it was kind of daylight out, right? Because my dogs are afraid of the dark. I can't put them out at night. Okay. All right. So, but I hope <laughs> that that helps you remember the verse. In fact, let's watch it one more time. And there were shepherds living nearby in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Okay, so that's your verse. Now I know it's long and it's a little hard, but you can remember the video of the dogs and the sheep out in the yard to try and help you remember it. And you have one month to learn it. That's a long time, it's a long time. So you just go over, you can watch this video over and over and over again. So you can say it over and over and over again, just like we used to do in Sunday school and learn your verse. In a month, we'll add on to it the second verse, okay? All right, guys, I miss you. I wish I could see you. Are you there? Are you there? I can't see you. Eh, I hope you're there. All right, and next week, I'm going to tell you a story and we're going to start a new series we've done with Paul and we're going to do some new things about church and about the first church. Okay, so I will see you. Well, I won't really see you, but I will see you next week. Bye.